Hello, my name is Stephanie Thilby, and I represent Mujeres Latinas en Acción. You're watching an interactive live call-in program. We are going to discuss economic empowerment for women who have experienced domestic and or sexual violence. I invite you to call in with questions at 312-738-1060. Again, that's 312-738-1060. Our phone lines are now open. Thank you for joining us. Before we get started on today's topic, I'd like to introduce you to today's guest, Maria Cristina Ortiz. She's an advocate for the Empresarias del Futuro program over at Mujeres Latinas en Acción. Thank, Thank you for, for coming up. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So on our last segment um, that we recently did, we talked a little bit more about intimate partner sexual violence and um, kind of the factors that it plays into in the context of a relationship. Now what we discussed is the reason why it might be difficult for a victim who is experiencing sexual violence to simply just get up and leave. Um, a lot of the times people have the misconception that someone who is experiencing domestic violence or sexual violence can simply leave the relationship when in reality there's a lot of factors that play into perhaps why someone cannot um, leave the relationship. Um, last time we spoke, we did talk about the fact that um, it's a complex of psychological, cultural, religious, familial, as well as economic factors that often contribute to a victim's decision whether or not she's going to remain or stay in the relationship. Behind fear, domestic violence survivors often cite income, employment, and financial stability as the strongest deterrence in leaving abusive situations. Oftentimes, it's because the abuser is the only source of economic support in the family. In other words, the victim is depending on financial support from the abuser in order to uphold their economic needs. I want to cite a study that stated that approximately 6 out of 10 Americans strongly agree that the lack of money and steady income is often challenged as a challenge faced by a survivor of domestic violence when leaving his or her abuser. Research suggests that women with economic skills are more likely to leave abusive situations and sustain themselves and their families in the long run. Now, when taking this into account, it's important for us to ask, what resources does a victim have, specifically in the community, that can potentially allow them to have economic stability? And that brings me to my next point. Um, and to, um, Empresarias del Futuro is a program that we offer in Mujeres Latinas, and I'm going to turn it over to Maria Cristina, who's going to be talking a little bit more about the program as well as what it offers. So Maria Cristina, can you tell us a little bit about the program as well as the history and what really spanned um, the program to get started? Of course. So Empresarias del Futuro, or Entrepreneurs of the Future, is a 15-week course that we offer women who are interested in opening um, a small business. Um, or who have one and want to make it better, or who had one and don't know they don't know why it didn't work out. So mm -hmm. um, it's just really an uh, uh, interactive program um, where it's divided into three components. So it's um, self uh, leadership po component, uh, a financial and, uh, literacy component, and a small business component. Um, the way the program came about. Um, we noticed in our domestic violence program that many of the women were returning to their abusers mm -hmm. because of um, economic instability. Um, many of them were not able to work during um, that the abusive relationship, so they didn't have um, any job experience or job readiness, um, so it was very difficult for them, and we saw them returning to their abusers. So this was a way for them to, because many of our Latina women mm -hmm. already sell things at home. They sell food, jewelry, um, Tamales. Tamales, mm -hmm. uh, candles, anything and everything, right? They're amazing women. Um, and But they weren't um, actually giving, self, giving themselves the credit of contributing to the household. Mm -hmm. So um, this program really tries to focus on the leadership component as well as um, the small business component. And uh, let's say um, someone is interested in taking the course. Are there any specific requirements? Um, well, it's a 15-week course for Latina women. It's a Spanish-speaking program. Um, they, they just need to have the, the interest in, in wanting to, to sell a service or a product and um, improve, improve financially. So it's 15 weeks. Can you talk to us a little bit more about the curriculum? I know sure. you said it's broken up into three um, time frames or periods. I should expand on that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no worries. Um, so the first component is um, the leadership component where we um, talk about topics such as self-esteem, um, communication, uh, constructive criticism, goal setting, uh, organizational skills, networking, um, topics like such as that. Um, the financial literacy component is um, budgeting, saving, uh, credit, how to establish it, how to um, 
make it better, improve it. Um, Social Security, taxes, um, anything related <laughs> to the financial industry, how banks work. Many women don't even know how to how bank bank institutions work. So now I noticed you mentioned that you guys cover self esteem, which I find interesting because typically when you think of a financial um, independence course or literacy course, one might ask, well, why do you guys cover self esteem? Can you talk? To us a little bit more about that and why you would cover sure. self-esteem um, many of the programs or different organizations around the city offer different um, components of this program we mm -hmm. offer a comprehensive program where we include all these topics um, but it's really important for the women to focus on their um, self-esteem so that if they're if they're in a position to try to sell a business or a service or a product that they they believe in the product and the service and people will actually buy it right if you don't believe in it, no one's going to buy it. Right. You have to have self-confidence in yourself in exactly. order to promote that. Nice. Now, what advice would you give to someone? Um, let's say perhaps um, we have a young woman that maybe has uh, never had a business, is interested in opening one, but kind of doesn't know what she needs to meet her goals. Would she be someone that you would encourage to take the course? Um, sure. I, knowledge is power, right? Um, so we, we definitely encourage women who are who even have the, the little inkling of trying to start a business to actually take the course. Um, and in the end, they might realize that opening a business isn't for them, and that's completely fine. And we want people to, to be aware of the resources and um, opportunities that are available um, before they, they take make an investment and try to make a or start a business. Establish the business, right. For those of you just tuning in, I just want to uh, recap what we've talked about so far. So today we're talking about economic empowerment for victims who have experienced perhaps sexual violence or domestic violence. So I just want to um, touch base with a statistic that I found talked about earlier in the show, which stated that um, research suggests that women with economic skills are more likely to leave abusive situations and sustain themselves and their families in the long run. So I want to continue our conversation um, Maria Cristina, and talking about the course, typically, um, where would the course take place or how can someone sign up? Is it flexible, the schedule? Um, we try to offer um, the, the course both in our headquarters, which is in Pilsen, and in um, our North Riverside office. And we offer um, other, other courses. Um, well, we offer them both in the, the evening and in the morning um, to accommodate different schedules. And do you have any, uh, say, success stories of maybe someone who's completed the course that stood out to you or a story that you'd like to share with our audience today? Well, let me finish a little bit about the curriculum. Um, we The last part of the, um, and then I'll get to the, okay, the sure. success story. Um, the last part of the, the course is five weeks on small business. So we mm -hmm. offer the, the basics um, to open uh, a business. What do you need? Um, how to do... Um, market analysis, right? Um, how to identify the industry, how to identify a client, um, what you, any licensing or permits you would need, um, lo business loans, connecting people with um, those opportunities. Um, we do have a partnership with Acción Chicago and um, the Women, Women's Business Development Center. Um, so there are two organizations who offer alternative financing for small business, especially for women who mm -hmm. are interested in opening a business. Um, and so I just received an email from um, one of our uh, colleagues at uh, Acción Chicago. One wow. of our one mm -hmm. of our participants received a ten thousand um, dollar micro loan um, to expand her home daycare. That's amazing. So we're really excited about that. Um, another success story: I uh, one of our clients who makes amazing tamales, by the way. <laughs> um, if you need her number, <laughs> contact me. Um, she's definitely, um, she's paved her way. You know, she came from Mexico, um, didn't have a family here. Um, she's an indigenous um, woman, and she's definitely um, made a name for herself. Everyone calls me for her tamales. So <laughs> That's incredible. Um, mm -hmm. She's in the process. She just took a, um, the food and sanitation course, um, and she's in the process, process of um, getting her license and permit um, to try to establish a little... Um, storefront so as of this moment can both men and women uh, any age take the course or is it just women unfortunately it's just women um, the curriculum is designed for women mm -hmm. um, but maybe in the future if there's enough interest we'll open it up to men um, but right now there's not an age restriction I have um, participants who are you know range from 20 to 70 so it's definitely a learning a experience good range, right? it's a good range good experience um, so 
Now, I know you mentioned um, within the curriculum itself, you try to incorporate opportunities that the participants can engage in. Um, would one of those opportunities perhaps be networking? What's something that they could look forward to in regards to networking? Of course. Um, we offered an internal networking event um, for our participants in August. Um, we invited all of the participants from each group to come and promote their businesses amongst each other. And it was a great, a great success. They were really um, motivated and encouraged and, you know, they're like, we can do this. Um, Absolutely. So it was very exciting. Um, we even invited our, our community partners there and they, they, again, the, with um, <laughs> Tamale <laughs> lady, um, ended up um, purchasing tamales for a big corporate event um, for, through her. And then our, we also, um, even bought uh, gelatinas from one of our participants for one of our um, the agency's leadership conferences. So that was a huge success for them. They were really excited. And I can actually vow for those uh, gelatinas <laughs> because I had the privilege of tasting them, and I must say that she is very good at what she does. Very talented. Yeah, she is indeed very talented. <laughs> um, so once again, if anyone wants that link to the tamales or the gelatinas, Maria Cristina would be someone definitely that you would want to... Um, follow up with. Again, I'm going to um, display that information. So it's the program is called Empresarias del Futuro. The contact person for that would be Maria Cristina and she could be contacted at 773-890-7676. And then if you would like further information aside from what we're talking about here today, um, you can also go to our website, mujereslatinasenaccion.org. So continuing with our conversation, um, Maria Cristina, I know we talked about networking. Is that something that, um, would they be able to sell their products at that time? Or do they talk about their business? Or how would that, how would a networking event look at that time? Well, we had the internal one. Um, unfortunately, in that opportunity, because it was um, at the agency, we weren't able to allow them to buy or sell amongst each other. But mm -hmm. they can sell and buy um, once they leave the agency. But we did have another event um, at the Mexican uh, National Museum of mm -hmm. Mexican Art uh, in December. And it was definitely uh, a huge success. Um, we opened it up to the community, and um, it was kind of like a holiday market right before Christmas. Um, so people were able to um, buy presents for like, Christmas. <laughs> That's <laughs> always a plus. Presents um, for people, so it was, it was really exciting. And we they already gave us the green light to to be able to host it again next year. So That's great. we're looking forward to that. And I think in in probably April or May we'll be hosting another, another internal um, networking event for them. And then can you talk to us a little bit more about typically um, the participants that you've had, what type of businesses have they usually um, you tried to establish? Does it range? Do you see that it's maybe a certain <laughs> kind? Of course. Um, I'm telling you, these women are amazing. They do, <laughs> they do everything. Some women, I, I just started a new group today, and um, she's like, I saw Mary Kay, I saw soap, I saw... <laughs> It a ranges. little bit of everything. It ranges. Um, but I've, I've noticed a lot of people wanting to open um, cleaning businesses, um, daycares, um, restaurants. It, it ranges. Uh, auto insurance. So mm -hmm. They're definitely very talented. Great. So again, for those of you that are just tuning in, today we're talking about economic empowerment and how a, an individual can establish that economic empowerment, specifically those that have experienced domestic violence or sexual violence and are trying to um, start their lives over and uh, refrain from going back to that relationship. So picking up on another um, study, approximately six out of 10 Americans strongly agree that a lack of money and steady income is often a challenge faced by survivors of domestic violence. Also, after fear, um, many domestic violence victims have cited their economic stability as a reason to why they were not able to leave the abuser. So, Maria Cristina, talking about that and a little bit more about the history of the program, and I know you mentioned that a lot of um, it, what spanned the program was that, you know, a lot of domestic violence victims didn't have that economic stability and were going back to the abuser. Do you find that um, that's still what moves the program? Do you find that maybe you still get a lot of clientele that are um, trying to change their lives in that aspect? Well, I want to make a note that not all of, of our clients, or you don't need to be a domestic mm -hmm. violence um, or sexual assault survivor or victim um, in order to participate in this program, but it is an option for those who are interested in starting a business and who have had that experience. Um, but we, we have noticed that, that because of um, the abuse, right, many people um, go back to the abuser, unfortunately, because of mm -hmm. economic reasons. 
Um, there was um, well, one of the reasons why the program was started. There was a client in our domestic violence program who sold amazing cakes. Right? It was. Mm-hmm. It was. I, I heard. I haven't had the pleasure <laughs> of trying them, but they were amazing. And um, she was in an abusive relationship. She was trying to get ahead, um, but because of her her self esteem, she wasn't. She was selling them locally, you know, with friends, family, whatnot. And her daughter was like, Mom, you make great cakes. Why don't you sell them at the park? She's like, no, you're crazy. I can't sell them at the park. Like, who does that? Who's going to buy them? Who's going to buy them? And just totally, like, shutting herself down. You know, like, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Mm-hmm. So um, the client was being, or her daughter was being the, the little promoter and um, getting business for, for her mother and um, slowly... Um, trying to um, establish a name for herself. And she took the program, one of our pilot programs, and she's doing a lot better now. That's great. That's great to hear. Also, um, so let's say someone has completed the 15 weeks. What can they expect once they um, graduate? Do they get, like, a certification? Um, what would they get after c- completion of the course? Well, they don't necessarily get... They get a diploma after completing um, the 15-week um, course. Um, it doesn't certify them to do anything, but it does show that they know a little bit more about business, right? Mm-hmm. And definitely, um, it's taken into consideration if they try to have a... Um, or try to ask for a micro loan at a bank or uh, with Acción or WBDC. Mm-hmm. Um, they definitely take that into consideration um, when giving out loans. So they see that they at least took the initiative to try to learn about business, exactly. try to learn about financial literacy. And after the program, unfortunately, they they still stuck with me. <laughs> um, that could be a good thing. I do a one-year follow-up. So we asked our, our participants to um, definitely uh, make the commitment to do a one-year follow-up. And so three months, six months, and at, at the year, um, I'll definitely call them and just ask them how, how are things going? Um, do they need any additional resources? Mm-hmm. Can I help them in any other way? So I definitely try to um, be an advocate and uh, another resource for them um, in this journey, right? It's, it's like raising it's a, a baby. Yeah. The, <laughs> having a business is like raising a baby. So. so again, for those of you tuning in that are interested in the program, here's a little bit of information. The program is called Empresarias del Futuro. Your contact person for that would be our guest today, Maria Cristina, which can be reached at 773-890-7676. And if you would like more information about this program or any of our other programs at Mujeres Latinas, you can also um, go to our website, mujereslatinasenaccion.org. So, Maria Cristina, I know you mentioned that aside from, you know, the taking the course and going physically there, you also do individual one-on-one sessions with the participants, meanwhile, the duration of the course. Now, what would an individual session um, consist of? So, we ask the participants to also um, engage in one-on-one sessions. We have a one-on-one coaching session in the beginning of the course and then one at the end. And it's basically um, to try to assess where they're at in their process of opening a business or having a business or... Um, so it's kind of, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Um, Mm -hmm. what are your experiences? Um, because some, someone can say, I want to open a restaurant, but they've never, you know, they they never a waiter or (laughs) anything, you know? So we definitely try to, um, find something for them to, um, kind of, sorry, I'm thinking in Spanish. (laughs) It's okay. Um, Sorry. Um, to try to line up their, their experiences with what they want to do. Right. Um, because if I sell 10 million, uh, 10 million products. Right. And I, I want to focus on one that's a going to give me the most money, but be something that I'm actually going to like to want to sell and see something I have experience doing. So it's it's. It's, it's an interesting <laughs> one-on-one session, but because everyone has different experiences um, and different abilities, um, mm-hmm. it's definitely trying to um, bring it in and try to uh, get to know um, the participants a little more. Do you uh, tend to do, like, maybe, let's say, budget planning as part of that? Um, we don't do the individual budget planning at mm-hmm. that session. Um, if clients are interested in um, looking for a loan, mm-hmm. right, you have to kind of assess what your... What your um, asking for or what you're going to need. So I, I'll sit down with um, participants and ask them, well, what is it that, for example, I had a client who mm-hmm. um, has a home salon and she wanted a $1,500 loan, which she got, which is oh, another success great. story. <laughs> um, but we sat down and, um, you know, looked up prices for different um, products that she needed um, to be able to, to launch. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll do something like that. 
But I'm pretty flexible. I really help them with whatever they need. I even help design uh, business cards for them. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> so. so I know you mentioned um, with the course, actually, let me just follow up with everyone who's now just now joining us. So today we're talking about um, financial and economic empowerment for women who have experienced domestic violence and or sexual assault. I also want to note that um, this program doesn't only require um, victims of sexual assault or domestic violence. As Maria Cristina, it could be any woman who is interested in taking the course can simply uh, take the course. The program is called Empresarias del Futuro. The contact person for that is Maria Cristina, which can be reached at the number listed on the screen, 773-890-7676. And you can also go to our website for more information. So Maria Cristina, um, what, what advice would you give to um, someone who wants to start a business but maybe they're unsure of what they need um let's say they do want to get a mortgage or take out a small business loan is that covered or do you have speakers that come in to maybe um, teach them how to do that can you have collaborations with other agencies for that as i mentioned before we do have a collaboration with Action chicago and the women's business development center as well with um, local um, community banks um, but we re like I mentioned, it's if you have it, if you have the inkling of wanting to start a business, definitely knowledge is power. So we, we encourage um, women to take um, opportunity of this um, free program, um, which is really comprehensive, um, and just to learn, you know. And if if they decide that they at the end they do want to go ahead with this um, endeavor, then they definitely have the resources and support to do so. Um, but at the end of the day, they might not want to open a business, and that's fine, right? But it just just being able to learn about it and seeing what, what is required, it's, it's not an easy task, <laughs> having a small business. Um, so mm -hmm. definitely, um, we encourage uh, women who are interested in, in contacting me and um, to see if they want to take the program. Um, women, the Women's Business Development Center um, actually offers three additional sessions after the 15-week course mm -hmm. for Empresaria. So it's an optional three weeks, um, but they definitely focus more, go more in-depth in um, establishing a business plan um, for women who want to uh, open a small business or want to ask for a loan. And then I also noticed um, the course itself is offered in Spanish, correct? Correct. So it would be Spanish-speaking women who mm -hmm. are interested in taking the course. Do you plan on um, sometime in the future maybe having an English group? Um, if there's enough interest, um, we would definitely um, uh, encourage people to <laughs> voice their their um, opinion about um, opening a, a English group or a Saturday group or a group for men. <laughs> um, but there has to be enough interest. Enough interest. So, so sort of like a waiting list to know, okay, we have enough people, and then that would exactly. definitely be a possibility. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Maria Cristina, what... Um, what other objectives would you say that the course has? Do you allow the participants to set objectives for themselves, maybe goals that they want to establish before the end of the course when you do maybe individual one-on-one? -on -one? We kind of do goal setting all throughout the program. I, it's, I mentioned it under the leadership component. Um, we do personal goals, um, short-term and long-term goal setting. Um, we do financial um, goal setting as well as um, goals that they have for um, their business. So definitely using that as a way to um, measure um, their success and their their improvement, right, I suppose. Their areas of improvement, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So for those of you tuning in, today we're talking about economic empowerment, specifically for women that have experienced sexual assault or domestic violence. Um, I want again want to go to the overhead and give you more information. This is um, where you can go. So the program is called Empresarias del Futuro. You could contact Maria Cristina at 773-890-7676. Or you, to obtain more information, you can also go to our website, which is mujereslatinasenaccion.org. So just to wrap up in this final minute, uh, Maria Cristina, what... What would you like to say to our women out there that uh, perhaps are struggling in a situation where they're trying to escape their abuser and they want to obtain that financial security, that economic empowerment? What advice would you give to that person who's maybe hesitant and doesn't know what resources are available in the community? I definitely encourage them to, to join the program. Um, it's a great uh, support system, um, just even being in the group. So definitely getting ahead and just knowing that you can do it. I and mean, sometimes all you need are baby steps, but it's possible. 
All right. Well, for those of you that had the opportunity to tune in today, I'd like to thank you. I also want to thank our guest, thank Maria Cristina, for talking about their wonderful program over at Mujeres Latinas, which is um, called Empresarias del Futuro. If anyone is interested in any of the information we showed today, you can also contact us at 773-890-7676. Thank you, and stay tuned for the next show in five minutes. Today.